Hey folks, I want to talk to you a little bit today about optics and a couple things related to optics. Uh, a couple of topics that maybe we don't discuss a whole lot in 3-Gun. First, uh, when I put any kind of optic on a rifle, regardless of what kind it is, I always want to make sure that my torque specifications are correct. Um, I use worn mounts. Worn makes these great little torque tools. Um, so basically, when I go to put a scope on, I torque it correctly, and you can see that that torque it releases so that I don't over torque it. Okay. Same thing with the screws on the top. They've got a little torque wrench, and when I go to do it, and you see it break in my hand. But that's basically when I torque down, I want to make sure that I have the same torque on all of my screws, and I'll periodically retorque them. I mean, if I'm going to clean the rifle and redo it, I'll make sure that everything is torqued correctly. I don't use any Loctite. I don't like it. It's not needed if you have a good mount. So anyway, uh, I, I love the Warren products, um, but it, regardless of what you're using, uh, make sure that you torque your mount and your mount screws. Make sure that you torque them consistently and appropriately uh, across the board, and that will help with making sure that your scopes don't come loose and move. All right. One thing I want to talk about, or the, the big thing I want to talk about, is cheek weld, stock, and eye placement. There, there's something called parallax, and it, it's, it's an engineering term to some degree, but it talks about the target at distance looking through a tube with a bunch of pieces of glass in it and your eyeball. And there are environmental factors that can slightly influence parallax, light, heat mirage, those kind of things. For three gun, it's really not a big deal. It's not something we're gonna really have to worry about or deal with. Um, but when I put my rifle up, and I'm at one X, when I put my rifle up on this scope, I can keep my eye in the center, and if I move my scope, and I roll it over, meaning my eyeball is to the right of the actual center line of the scope, I start to get a little bit of a black ring on the right side. If I roll it to this side, I get a little bit of a black ring on the left side. If I go too high, black ring comes on the top. And if I go too low, the black ring comes in the bottom. My cheek weld's not perfect. So I'm perfectly lined in the scope, basically right there. If I close my eyes and get my natural point of aim and come down on the rifle, I've got a little bit of black at the bottom. I can barely just see that black ring poking up on the bottom and starting to include maybe the bottom oh, 10 or 15 percent of the scope. So what does that do? Well when my eye is not in line with the optic, the center bore of the optic, things can move. So the actual target at distance and what that distance is is going to depend on the scope and the magnification of the scope. But at further distances it's going to actually, the target's going to move. So where's your crosshair? Where's your center hold? Where do you hold? Um, so like I said, again, 200 yards and in. This is a Burris MTAC. This is set, the parallax is set at the factory. I can't adjust it. But what I found with this scope was when I do some of the tests, I don't get parallax at 200 or so yards. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried, really worried about the cheek position. One of the things that I want to do is I want to take and set the gun up and look at distance and see if I can get the target, if the gun's exactly solid and all I'm moving is my eye, can I get that crosshair to actually pan across the front, up or down, or sideways across the target? And how I will test that is I will go out to a couple hundred yards, maybe two or three hundred yards, and I will shoot this target. So the very first shot that I make, center target, I want to make sure everything's perfect, everything is aligned, everything is exactly like I want it, and I'll shoot that target. Then I will move my eye low right, as low right as I can comfortably get it in the scope, and I'm going to have some black starting to come in from that low right, and I'll shoot this target. High right, high left, low left. 
By doing that, I can see at 200 yards, 300 yards, I can see what my eye position is doing to the point of impact. I can actually test and figure out what my actual parallax on that actual scope is. And what you'll find, depending on what scope you have, is if you've got a 1 to 4 or lower or a fixed power scope, you're probably going to have almost no parallax. Once you get to a 1 to 5, a 1 to 6, a 1 to 8, parallax is going to be there. Um, it may be minimized. A cheap scope is going to have a lot more than a more expensive scope. It's just the way it is. Um, you know, lesser quality components are going to result in more distortion. Okay? So, stock. So you'll notice on this stock, I've got a Royal Arms stock on it. This has adjustable uh, cheek weld. Okay? So a couple things. One, I want to make sure that when I pull my charging handle back, that it doesn't hit. So I can go all the way back and it doesn't actually hit that cheek riser. When the gun is up, I close my eyes, I'll get on the scope, and I'll actually get to my low position where my cheek weld is in, and I open my eye, I don't want to see any black at all. Okay, so this is this scope, this cheek riser, this stock set up this way. When I close my eyes and come down, and I actually put my cheek down, so that's my proper weld, when I open my eye, I am perfectly centered on that scope. Okay, that's the way I want it. Some things will change. If I go prone, I'm going to rotate a little bit. I still, my eye, thankfully, my eye and my eye socket rotates. So from the pupil to the back of my eyeball remains the same. What I've got to make sure that I do is that I keep my eyeball centered in the tube. Okay? And again, that's related on that target. It will tell you what you're doing and how you're doing it. Okay? A different setup. This is my 308. This is the LMT stock. Um, I like it a lot. It's adjustable. Thanks, Matt Young and StrongSide for turning me on to this stock. Um, but again, it's got an adjustable cheek riser. Okay? So same thing. When I come up, close my eyes, I come down, and I actually lock in on the, on the um, cheek riser, and I open my eyes, perfect alignment. When I can see the reticle clear, and when I, if I move around a little bit, yeah, I can see the black come in, but I want to make sure that it's perfect. That's part of setting up your scope and your optic for your eyes, for shooting, to make sure that when you come up on the gun, your cheek weld is the same all the time and your eye is directly behind the center axis of the optic. Again, we want to make sure that we have clearance from the charging handle. We don't want to short charge that on the clock, obviously, so make sure that that works. Okay. So this is also 1 to 5 from Burris, um, same as I use on my 16-inch um, gun, which is my main match gun for this year, um, which I'll shoot in most major matches. Um, the 308 uh, setup is similar. And then when we go to a precision gun, we have some differences. Um, this rifle, same thing, I've got adjustable everything on it. So that when I come up, close my eyes, when I come up, I open my eye, perfect alignment. Okay, It's exactly where I want to be. When I'm looking at a precision rifle, also I, I realize that I'm going to be shooting standing, concrete, dirt, grass, barricades, prone, bench. I need to take a target like this and go out and shoot all those various positions to make sure that I know what's going on and either adjust my gear or adjust my hold or, or improve my technique. Uh, technique has got a big part to do with it, but improve my technique so that regardless of what I'm doing, when I pull the trigger, if the reticle is on the target, I'm going to hit the target. So one of the biggest things that I see in 3-Gun, especially when people get past about 200 yards is even though they can hit a, a 4 MOA target at 100 yards or 200 yards, they start to miss at 3, 4, and 500 yards. It's not because of wind, uh, 69 grains, um, 77 grain, 223 bullets. 
at the ranges we shoot them at, at, yeah, maybe a target width here and there as far as wind. I know people are shooting three gun nationals or three gun um, USPSA three gun nationals right now. It's supposed to be really windy. Yeah, it'll push. Um, but what I see more often than not is improper cheek weld to scope. Okay. When I see people come up on a three gun stage and they're shooting long targets and they come into the rifle and they start moving their head around, that's because this is wrong. The stock, the eye, and the scope are no longer in alignment. I don't care about this height necessarily. I care about my eyeball to the scope to the stock. Okay, This is what matters. If the scope sits five inches above the barrel or one inch above the barrel, I don't care. This perfectly square is what is important and perfectly consistent is what is important. So think about your stock, think about what it, what effect it has on parallax and think about your scope choices. If you're starting out and you buy a inexpensive scope, stay at one to four or less so that parallax is not an issue. It's almost like um, having a nice 1911 trigger versus a Glock trigger. If, if you're fighting parallax, you're fighting a long trigger pull. Same, same difference. Um, so think about it, pay attention to it, go to the range, practice in these different positions at three, 400 yards and figure out when I shoot this way, what does it do? What does concrete do? What does wind do? What, you, you gotta figure out the variables. If you don't figure out the variables, you have no idea what you're doing and you're just turning money into noise. One, one last caveat, or two actually last caveats. One is if you shoot with glasses, um, which you all should be in three gun, um, whether they're prescription or not, do the same thing. Take one of these targets out, shoot your best group at two or 300 yards, put on your glasses. Then shoot your best group at two or 300 yards. Yes, you're gonna have to adjust your focus on your scope, that's fine, but know what that focus is I actually have some stages where I'll shoot with prescription glasses and some stages where I will shoot without prescription glasses. My eyes are kind of in that transition zone. So make sure you know what to do. Um, last point, when we're talking about rifles for hunting, we have the same issue. Now usually we're using two to sevens or three to nines. Um, the parallax again is usually set at the factory and we're usually shooting distances, if we want to be honest, 100 yards. I mean, that's most deer shots are 100 yards or less. If you live in the West, I mean, I've shot a lot of game out four or 500 yards. Parallax is an issue, and having your eyes in the right position and the right location to your stock is correct. Since most rifles are set up to shoot iron sights from the stock comb, you need to make sure that if you rise your stock at all, or your, I'm sorry, if you rise your optic at all, that you also put something on your stock to compensate. We wanted the same thing. When I go down onto my hunting rifle, I wanted the exact same thing that when I open my eyes with a perfect cheek weld, my eyeball is in the exact center of that tube.